You visited colleges after this great senior year, and uh, you went to Notre Dame. You know, my brother Bob went, went with me, and as Coach DeVore is walking my brother Bob and I across campus to go see the head coach, it was cold. You know, it was like December and all, and it was pretty cold. And we're walking across campus, and Coach DeVore is telling us all the great things about Notre Dame, and the list goes on, folks, and it's a great university and all, man. But uh, I'm looking around, and uh, I didn't see a girl. Are there any girls here? And Coach DeVore said, oh, yeah, Joe, beautiful, wonderful girls here. I said, well, well, I don't see any. He said, oh, they're over across the lake here, over at St. Mary's. I said, across the lake. Jack out. <laughs> That was part of the first negative uh, vibe I got about Notre Dame of being there. And, and Coach Coherick was uh, uh, a terrific coach, I understand. I didn't play for him, but the communication between the two of us uh, in that meeting wasn't good. But you could read just the body language, the focus or the lack thereof. You thought, okay, Notre Dame, no. Right, no. Maryland, yes. You really wanted Maryland didn't get in because of low test scores. Yes, so I, I just, I fell in love with Maryland. I fell in love with the opportunity that Coach Nugent presented there. Uh, and uh, when the college boards came back, I missed it by four or five points. And the second time I missed it again by short points. And Coach Nugent ended up calling Coach Bryant. This is the story that I got. Coach Nugent at Maryland called Coach Bryant at Alabama and said, name it is still out there. The great Bear Bryant at Alabama. You talk about falling into the, you know, rose bush here with, uh, with this unbelievable program. You know, I, I was semi-shocked even getting there, Joe. First of all, folks, when I got home from school, there was a guy sitting in the living room talking to my mother. His name was Howard Schnellenberger, who happened to be the great, a great football coach he turned out Legend. to be. Yes, and, and, and Howard and my mother talked before I knew what was happening, and she said, Coach Snellenberger, he introduced himself. My mother, while he's saying hello, Joe, and all, goes upstairs, comes back down with a suitcase that big. You could put it underneath the seat of a, any airplane now. She gave me a $5 bill and said, take him. Honey, you're going to college here. You're going to Alabama, and that was it. Oh I, there was no, I didn't visit the campus prior to anything. I didn't know Alabama football. I had watched them play Penn State in the Liberty Bowl the year before, and I liked Alabama because they had dark headgears. I liked their look. <laughs> Back to style. I, I, I didn't know anything about Coach Bryan at the time. That's how lucky I was. I didn't know anything about one of the greatest teachers that ever walked the earth. So you show up, and not long after that, you end up in Coach Bryant's tower. Folks, I'm going to tell you, this is a fact. I understood one word, <laughs> one word that he said to me, the, the 10 minutes or five minutes or whatever, I was up in that tower with him. And I didn't know what that word meant. <laughs> <laughs> He'd mumble something, he said, oh, stood. He stood. <laughs> Kept saying stud, S-T-U, stud. You know, like a thoroughbred horse goes right. to stud, and you know, he gonna be stood. And I did not know what he was talking about. And that's when I started to find out that I was in a different part of the world. I mean, forget football. I mean, this, this is culture shock for you when you got to Alabama. You, your best friends were African-American, that you were part of that community, and now you get down there, and you're talking about the Deep South, and that wasn't something that, I mean, this is the 1960s we're talking about, where, you know, this was a new world to you, right? It didn't cross my mind that segregation was happening. And whenever I was taken to the Greyhound bus station to take the bus back out of town, that's the first time I noticed. I saw above the water fountains and above the restrooms, white and colored. I didn't know. There were, you had pictures in your room of you and your, 
African American friends, and that, that was, you know, that was that was life back home. And there were teammates that called you the N word. Yeah, they didn't last long. Coach Bryant figured out who was, you know, giving their best and who was right. And uh, anyway, uh, sometimes uh, the rats would jump ship. They don't want to, but they need to. And uh, I figured I, I was confused because these guys be going to church, would be going to church, would be praying, would be treating people with respect, treating everybody the way Coach Bryant did himself. We'd be trying to follow in Coach Bryant's footsteps uh, as much as we could to be the best we could be. And how could they feel this way? What was going on here? And it wasn't just Tuscaloosa. It was the entire Southeastern Conference. Now, that was something that I was shocked over, too, being from Western PA where everything was normal, I thought, going to somewhere where not one of the universities was integrated. Did it make you want to leave the university? Absolutely. Absolutely. But uh, that's quitting. You see, quitting was scarier. Where are you on the depth chart your sophomore year? Well, I was fortunate. Again, I was a pretty good athlete and we had a good team and, and I won the starting quarterback job my freshman spring. You didn't, you didn't, you couldn't, freshman couldn't play. No, on the varsity. we played three games uh, our freshman year. Uh, we had five quarterbacks, and Coach Bryant saw something uh, in me to uh, uh, afford me the chance to, to start as a sophomore. And uh, folks, one of the best lessons I would tell you guys, uh, my, before my very first game as a sophomore, we're opening up against Georgia. And Coach Bryant, there's five of us. I'm the only sophomore. Coach Bryant says, Joe, you got the plan? I said, yes, sir, I think so. You think so? Son, it's time you know the hay is in the barn. Now, I didn't know what that meant <laughs> <laughs> about the hay in the barn. But I tell you what, from that moment on, I always knew the plan. I never said I think so again. When my coach asked me, do you know, I made sure I knew. Can you still hear Bear's voice in your head? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, I, I, you know, not a day goes by that I, I don't think of Coach Bryant somehow. Something comes up. I, maybe a day goes by or so, but I think of my teammates. I think of coaches. I think of things that happened in sports that are applicable to everyday life.